Greetings from Vincent, the Reaper Tierney. Tonight, we listen to another episode from the Soul Twin Audio Network. As I sit here and listen, you will become a witness to something most remarkable. As I place myself in a trance and embark on a journey to slip through the barrier of time and space. If I succeed, you may just hear my voice in the year 2024. <laughs> Modern day era driving you up a wall? Time travel not likely in your future? Then follow me for a healthy offering of yesteryear with old time radio theater. Your remedy for unwanted 21st century pain. Laura Mirsky in. I'm alone tonight. Alone in the wind and storm. I'm afraid, I'm afraid that I'm going to meet the unexpected. The unexpected. A secret future, a hidden destiny waiting for you. Where? When? Who knows? Tomorrow? Today? An hour from now? Perhaps in just a moment, you too will meet the, the unexpected. unexpected. Robert, what are you doing? Just closing the window, Aunt Mary. It's going to rain. Yes, I felt a storm coming on all day. Come over here, Robert, where I can touch you. Oh, you got your good flannel suit on. It's grey, isn't it? Yes, Aunt Mary, it's grey. You're going out again tonight. You're going to leave me alone here in the house. Don't be silly, Aunt Mary. I'll only be away a couple of hours. All day long I sit here waiting for the few moments when you'll come and talk to me. You don't know what it means to be old and helpless and blind. Blind? 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 Oh, shut blind? up, you stupid blind. blind. Please cover the parrot, Robert. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Look, Aunt Mary, I don't have to go into Willow Springs tonight. I'll stay home with you. No, no, go ahead. I'd rather be alone with Polly than feel I was keeping you from having a good time. Very well. Good night, Aunt Mary. Good night. Robert. Yes, ma'am? I think perhaps we should move into town. Why? Well, it's very lonesome out here. No neighbors. I don't like living so close to the asylum. He's gone. Left me here with only a parrot for company. Poor Polly. I don't know what I'd do if anything should ever happen to you. Now, where's my cane? Oh, yes. There. Now you'll be able to see me. We will listen to the radio together. Won't that be fun, Polly? Knob on the left. Yes, yes, this is the one. Here is a bulletin just received. Residents of the Willow Springs area are warned to be on the alert for a homicidal maniac who has escaped from the State Institution for the Criminally Insane. Escaped? He's the notorious question mark killer, James Mark. Dark, heavy set, about six feet tall. Oh, no. When last seen, he was wearing a blue denim shirt and trousers. This man is the confessed slayer of ten victims. Oh, Polly. Each of which he strangled with a piece of cloth and cut a small question mark into their forehead. Strangled? Mark is a homicidal maniac and extremely dangerous. Turning now to the weather, we're looking for... Murderer. 
loose in the woods. Why, he might come here. He might see the light. I'd better turn it off. Yes, that's it. The switch is by the door. There, that's done. Oh, what if, what if Robert did turn out the lights? Then I've turned them on again, and the murderer could see the house. He'd be sure to see it, but I don't know. I don't know if the lights are off or on. I can't tell. What am I doing, flashing the light? He's certain to see that. Oh, why isn't Robert here? Why isn't somebody here? The girl. The girl. That's it. I'll telephone the girl. She'll come and stay with me. Number, please. Operator, get me 69J. Operator? What's wrong with this phone? Operator? 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 It's no use. The telephone's dead. Dead? 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 Well, there's nothing I can do but sit here and wait. Can't telephone. Can't go for help. Just wait for Robert. Be quiet, Polly. Be quiet. Don't make a sound. He doesn't know we're here. He'll go away. He's got to go away. Anybody in there? Quiet, Polly. Quiet. Hey, is anybody inside? Uh, uh, come on, open up. I know there's somebody in there. I saw the lights flash. Don't try to hide from me. Open up. Who are you? I'm a guard from the asylum. We're hunting for an escaped killer. Let me in. Oh, that's different. Just a minute. Thank you. You uh, live here all alone? No. I, my nephew stays with me. Where's he? Why, he had to go into town. Ah. It isn't... It isn't safe for you to be here all alone tonight. There's a maniac in these woods. Yes. Yes, I know. Say, you're acting awfully funny. Uh, what are you so afraid of? Nothing. No one. Well, I believe... I, I believe you're afraid of me. Why? Why would I be afraid of you? Well, that beats me, unless... Unless you think I'm that loony killer. <laughs> well, I'll be... You, you don't really think that now, do you? I don't know. I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh, look, lady, that guy Mark is tall and dark. I'm only five foot six and I've got red hair, can't you see? No, I can't. I'm blind. You're... Oh, gee, lady, I'm awfully sorry. I didn't know. You're... You're really a guard? Yeah, lady. Guard O'Reilly. Oh, thank heaven. <laughs> I was so frightened. Well, I... I've got to be running along. Just had to be sure he wasn't hiding here. Good night. You take care of yourself. Mr. O'Reilly. Mr. O'Reilly, please stay. I'm afraid to be alone. I'm... I'm afraid. I I'd like to help you out, lady, but I can't. You'll be all right here. Nothing to worry about. But... Please, if you just... Good night, lady. Good night. Good night. He's right, isn't he, Polly? We're safe. We're, we're perfectly safe. They've probably already caught the fella. I've got to get a hold of myself. I can't go on like this. <coughs> must have come rattling the door. That's all it is. Just the wind. No. No. Somebody is there. It can't be the wind. Somebody's shaking the door. It's, it's Robert. It's got to be Robert. He forgot his key. It's Bobby. It's my Bobby. Oh, please make it be Bobby. Bobby wouldn't break in, Polly. Who are you? What do you want? What is it? What do you want? Go away. Please, go away. I'm blind. Can't you tell I'm blind? I promise I won't tell anyone you was here. I promise. 
You've torn down the curtain. Why are you doing that? You don't want to kill me. I'm just a harmless, blind old woman. What are you doing in that drawer? I haven't any money. What was that? A paper knife? No! No! I'll get away! I'll run! I've got to get away! Where's my cane? You won't catch me. You're not going to kill me. The door. Where's the door? Let go of me. Let go of me. I don't want to die. I don't want... Your coat. It's not denim. The radio said blue denim. Your coat's flannel. I can feel it. Yes, Aunt Mary. A gray flannel suit. Robert. It's Robert. What are you doing? Why are you trying to frighten me? Why did you break in? Why did you tear up the curtain? Because I'm going to kill you. No! The question mark killer will claim another victim. No one will suspect your heartbroken nephew. Let me go. Let me go. Help. Don't touch me. Oh, Bobby, please don't. It won't take long, Aunt Mary. Bobby! You! You think the story is over, don't you? But wait. Wait for The Unexpected. And now, Laura Mirsky in the surprising conclusion of Heard But Not Seen. It's O'Reilly, Warden. I'm at the Shilton place. Well, of course I got a phone line fixed. I'm talking, ain't I? Oh, it was Mark, all right. He strangled her with a piece of curtain and then used a paper knife on her forehead. Poor old blind woman. Strangled her parrot, too. No, no, she wasn't alone. Now, if she had been, I'd blame myself for not staying with her, but her nephew must have got back before it happened. Yeah, they found his body in the bedroom. <sighs> Murdered just like his aunt. Yeah, poor boy. I guess he was trying to save her, and that's probably why he got it. They say Robert was a nice young fella. Always took mighty good care of his aunt. <laughs> Heard But Not Seen, a drama of the unexpected, was written by Robert Lippett and Frank Burt and starred Laura Mirsky as Mary Shelton, Jake McCaskill as Robert Shelton, Sharon Grunwald as Polly the Parrot, John Bell as Vincent Tierney as the radio newscaster, and Dean T. Moody as O'Reilly the Asylum Guard. This recreation of The Unexpected was produced and directed by Rachel Pulliam for Soul Twin Audios, especially for Jack Ward's Sonic Society Summerstock Playhouse. All incidental themes and music were by Ross Bernhardt, with sound effects by freesound.org. This is Dean T. Moody, inviting you to listen again soon for another dramatic tale of The Unexpected.